Hi, I'm Dr. Charlene Walters, author, business and branding mentor, trainer, as well as your host for Launch, a business talk show for anyone who wants to launch their business, their career, or their life. Hi everyone, welcome to Launch. I'm your host, Charlene Walters, and today we have an awesome guest. We have Angela Meyer. She is a digital strategist and the founder of Angela Meyer's Creative. Welcome, Angela. Hi, Charlene. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so happy to have you here with us today and to talk about all the great things you do. Can you tell the audience a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, so I first got into the digital space actually over the pandemic. I started creating TikToks and Instagram posts about different books I was reading, and people really seemed to resonate with that. And I really enjoyed being able to tell stories digitally in different formats and connect with people online. From there, I started a marketing agency to be able to help other people do the same and to really help people get their stories and their businesses across and heard online. I started primarily in social media and then also branched out to offer email services, copywriting services, blog writing services, and Google ads. So that's a little bit about my story. It's so important to get those messages across for sure. And you're a creative entrepreneur yourself, obviously. Tell us a little bit more what that's like. Yeah, so I like being a creative entrepreneur because no two days are the same. I was someone who really loved school growing up. And I think entrepreneurship was a little bit more similar to school and learning than a lot of people think, because as an entrepreneur, I'm constantly learning and growing and facing new challenges, um, which is really to someone like me, it's just a really fun, awesome experience to have. And then the creative part of it is also really fun because my goal eventually is to be a published novelist. I'm currently working on and querying my first novel and I love that creative energy, but I also think that a lot of times we discredit the amount of creativity that's in everyday life. So when we think of something that's creative, we often think of a piece of artwork or a book, but marketing campaigns, for example, or social media posts can be creative as well. So I love being able to bring that creative energy into different marketing projects that I work on with my clients. Definitely. And I'm sure that they appreciate that angle because, you know, we see a lot of marketing content out there that's not very creative. So I know it's good to have someone like you on a team to kind of navigate and do that work for them. Do you have any advice for other creative entrepreneurs out there? I think a lot of times when we think about entrepreneurs, we think about these big high tech type of entrepreneurs, but there are so many that are creative entrepreneurs like yourself. What's something that maybe you wish you knew before you got started? Yeah, so along with my digital marketing agency, I also have a platform where I get to connect with a lot of creative entrepreneurs, which is awesome. And I think something that I didn't realize when I was first starting out and that a lot of creative entrepreneurs don't realize is that even though what you do is creative, there's still a lot of business involved. So it's really important to learn the other aspects of business, whether it's something such as money management and doing like bookkeeping and doing your taxes versus how to manage a business and develop a business strategically. So I think it's really important to figure out how to get those resources. And especially when you're first starting out, there's so many great free or low cost resources out there, such as books to learn that sort of information. And then the other thing that I think is really important that developing a personal brand can really help with online, but I think there's other ways to do it as well is networking and really building a community around your business. I think absolutely. I've seen that many times myself where people get so excited about launching their business. They forget that really the hard work is getting those sales and really thinking about driving revenue. And I think that's often lost in sort of the glamor of it all. For sure. But you did mention personal branding, which I is key and an important component, although there are others. And you're really successful on social media. You're an influencer. Do you have any other tips for entrepreneurs out there about doing well on social media? Yeah. So I always like to say that with social media and digital marketing in general, it's kind of a right, a right brain and left brain approach or area 
So you really want to make sure that you're doing your research and you understand what's performing well, but then you also want to have that creativity to be able to put your own spin on it. So when I work with clients, if it's in a new niche or when I first started in my niche, I studied a little bit what sort of content was resonating with people and what commonalities there were between the different pieces of content that were really resonating. And from there, I could create a list of okay, like X, Y, and Z content seems to perform really well with this audience. And then I also try to objectively think about it with, if I was a member of this audience, what content would I want to see? And you can kind of generate those ideas that way. But then when it comes to actually creating the content, it's okay to be a little bit more creative. I think a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we're really hung up on being professional, but depending on the platform, it's okay to be a little bit more creative and casual and relatable than always having to be super professional. I agree. You know, people want to get to know you and see that side of you and see you having fun and seeing you really enjoy what you're doing. You know, that makes them want to do business with you too. And social media, of course, is a great way. And I know that you also do a lot with email marketing campaigns. And sometimes we think about email marketing and we think it's passe, but it's still really quite effective. Can you tell us more about how to really make those email campaigns work? Yeah, email campaigns are definitely not flashy, but they still work (laughs) and they probably work. I don't know if I should say this. They have a different purpose than social media marketing. We'll say that. I think they work better at converting sales, but I think social media marketing is almost like the handshake that gets people in the door. Yeah. So if email marketing, um, I think when you think about it, you don't like, no one likes receiving spam emails or tons of emails in their inbox. So people are a little bit more guarded with who they give their email out to versus who they follow on Twitter or TikTok. So if someone gives you their email, you know that they're really invested in your brand and that you have a really unique opportunity to deliver your brand story to their email inbox. And I think making the most out of that opportunity and again, really thinking about what your audience would want to see from you and how you can serve your audience through emails is key to developing an email marketing strategy that will help develop your business. You're absolutely right, because I know for myself, I am really reluctant to give up that email address if I don't have to. So if you've got it, you definitely have to leverage it and take advantage. Something else that I know that you're quite good at and that I think is often overlooked is Pinterest as a tool for driving traction, gaining customers, etc. Can you tell us some tricks about how you make Pinterest work for a business? Yeah, Pinterest is kind of the secret weapon I use for a lot of my clients and my own brand, because if you look at Google SEO, um, it can take up to six months to a year to get Google SEO working correctly once you start with search engine optimizations. But on Pinterest, you can get a similar level of traffic in about three months if you know how to make dynamic content. So unlike Google, Pinterest is really about creating content that engages the viewer, especially visually. So you want to make sure that you have someone who has a creative eye working on your Pinterest or that you yourself, if you're doing your own Pinterest, are going on Canva and looking at different templates. Again, looking at pins that perform well for inspiration. And I think Pinterest is a really interesting space because it does straddle that line between being a search engine and being social media. And so you want to make sure that you're straddling that line too. I think a really great way to do this is to repost short form video content on Pinterest, especially right now, video content is performing well across the board, including on Pinterest. So having that engaging content that links back to your blog post, links back to your website, links to your email offer is really a great way to utilize Pinterest in your business. I think so too. Are there any specific types of businesses that do better with Pinterest? Pinterest than others? Or do you think everybody has an opportunity to utilize and leverage Pinterest? I don't want to say that there's any specific types of businesses that can't use Pinterest, because I'm sure there's an example from almost every industry of someone who's successfully using it. But I do think Pinterest is really great when whatever you're selling has a visual value to it or can be visually conveyed. So for example, if you were a doctor and you were trying to get people into your doctor's office, your practice, Pinterest wouldn't be as good because again, that's not really like a visual decision one and two, 
you can't control as much who's seeing your content. So it's not going to be local traffic that you're getting necessarily. Yes. But for example, if you're a wedding planner or if you have a food delivery service, things like that are great for Pinterest because people are going there for visually pleasing lifestyle content. Absolutely. I, I can see how that could be the case and definitely overlooked as we both said. Something else that I think is really cool about you is that you're so young, you're a recent college grad. Do you think as an entrepreneur, you ever get any pushback because you're so, so young? And tell us a little bit about your experience with that. Yeah, I think I think almost any entrepreneur is going to see a lot of pushback and setbacks during their journey. Um, I think it's unique being young because I think I go back and forth on if it would be better to be older when I started entrepreneurship. Because I think when you're older, you have more life experience and resilience built up. But I've also heard from older entrepreneurs that when you start younger, you can be a little bit more innovative and you don't really have that mindset of working for someone else. So you can develop that CEO mindset from the outset, which is very different than like an employee mindset. Um, I think no matter what age you are, entrepreneurship is probably one of the best ways to develop resilience and to yeah. really improve your mindset and be able to promote yourself and get your ideas out there. I think you're right. You know, there are pros and cons about starting off early or starting off later, but I always tell people, you know, the journey is unique. So you will end up as an entrepreneur when you're meant to end up as an entrepreneur. And, you know, there are challenges no matter what stage you're at for sure, as you and I both know. So it's great that you are embracing this entrepreneurship angle early on and I think you'll just continue to do very well with it. So I'm excited to keep following you as you progress further. Something else that you mentioned, which I think is really cool, and I know a lot of people in the audience, they want to write books. They're really excited by the whole idea of getting a novel, a book out there. You have a book. Tell us a little bit more about the book you're working on. Yeah, so the book I'm working on is a young adult contemporary. Um, I'm still not revealing a lot about it just because <laughs> I don't know exactly what phase it's going to be or what the angle is going to be when it does get picked up by a publisher. But I think I get a lot of questions about how to write a book. And I think there's really two aspects if you want to publish a book successfully. One is creating the time to actually write the book and developing it as a habit. Yes. It's very dangerous to start to think that you'll just write when you're inspired because we're not inspired that often. <laughs> so right. treating it like any other habit is going to be how you're actually going to write the book. And then second, I think if you want to be a writer, whether you're looking to get self-published or traditionally published, it's so important to know a little, about, a little bit about business. Even traditionally published authors are technically contractors, so they work for themselves, they're self-employed. So they need to have that business know-how, the business management skills, the strategy to be able to develop their own career. And they also, authors really need to have a really strong personal brand nowadays. Yes. Um, author platforms are more important than they've ever been before. So being able to build up a community online and connect with readers online is really going to be a determining factor if you're successful as an author. Definitely. I agree. Being an author myself, it's, it's a lot different than you initially think. You think you'll just throw that book kind of out there and there's so much more behind it. The business side, as you mentioned, and just finding the time to get it done. For me, I always dedicated certain blocks and, and that was the way I kind of focused and it helps too. I feel if you really just focus on one section or one chapter at a time, because if you think about it as this big whole book, you know, it just becomes overwhelming and you'll just keep putting it off and, and never get around to it. So I think it's really just about the focus. And then again, thinking about it as not just something that's a creative piece, but also something that needs to be sold, a product that you are putting out on the market and that involves researching all of the different angles including you know the customers that are going to resonate with the book what books are like it out there etc so much bigger deal and i applaud you for the steps you've taken and we're excited for when that book eventually comes out so you'll have to keep us posted about it I, yeah, that's the that's the one con of starting your author platform early is that then people want your book and it's not out yet <laughs> 
It happens, it happens to the best of us. You know, I have one that I started working on first that still hasn't come out yet and people are still asking me about that book. So it's never exactly a straight line in writing a book or anything you do. So just keep us posted and we'll be excited when it does come out. I have a fun little game that I like to play in my show. It's called, If You Tell Me Yours, I'll Tell You Mine. So would you like to play? Yes, let's play. All right, Angela. <laughs> First question for you is, who is your favorite Muppet or cartoon character if you haven't watched the Muppets? Yeah, I don't know. I've seen the Muppets, but I don't know if I'm familiar enough with them to like say a favorite character. I think my favorite cartoon character is probably either Belle or Jasmine. I was super into the Disney princesses <laughs> growing up. Very nice. Yeah, those are great characters. I think there's so many good Disney movies and so many good lessons to learn from those. As far as the Muppets, I really like the Swedish chef. And if you haven't seen it, it's kind of old, but he goes, dun, 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 dun. he just makes a lot of crazy noises and throws his food all over the place. And I always just really thought that was really funny. Of course, who doesn't love Kermit though? You know, the main character yeah. too. My second question is, what's your favorite way to get exercise? What do you like to do? If you do like to get exercise. Yeah, I love getting exercise. It's it's honestly a really great way to get good business ideas and creative ideas, but it really depends on the day. I would say it's probably tied between weightlifting and running, which are two very different forms of exercise. Very good. Yeah, they are two very different. I like to do a combo too. I have a rowing machine, which I love to use. That's my go-to. I used to go to the gym before the pandemic and then when the pandemic hit and we we're stuck at home, I started using the rowing machine. I've kind of gotten into a habit of that, although I do like to go outside and get some air and do some exercise outside too. And then I also like to do weight training as well. I think it's important to stay strong and give yourself a break as an entrepreneur, as a writer, as anything, and just take care of your fitness. It really does help inspire you and help you kind of stay more focused when you are working on those business-related activities. <laughs> My next question is, where do you want to travel to next? I actually have a trip planned right now to go to Spain in April. So that's where I want to travel to next. I have visited Spain before and it's fantastic. Everyone should go there. If they haven't already. Oh, that is really cool. Do you have any other travel tips for us little anxious travelers out there? Do you mean just like travel trips? tips in general or, or just, just places that are cool to go to yeah I think I think a lot of I think any place can be cool if you go in with the right mindset right um I personally also some of my other favorite com countries I've traveled to are Argentina Portugal and New Zealand so those are all top of the list very nice well I wish you well on your trip I enjoy traveling a lot too, although it's definitely slowed down since the pandemic, but my next, I hopefully, vacation spot will be Greece. I'm really looking forward to going there and just seeing, seeing it. It looks so beautiful and I'm always super excited to be by the ocean. So that is next on my list. Next question, what's something that you dread? Ooh, that's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> um hmm. I think okay. something that I dread is like overwhelm whenever I'm trying to respond or overwhelm in my like email inbox or my social media inbox it yeah. just really overwhelms me <laughs> I know I have that feeling of overwhelm sometimes and it always feels like you're in the middle of something else when you're hit with a million emails or really important things all at one time and they never kind of space out it's like just all at once I can understand yeah. that Something that I dread that's a little more basic than that is like doing laundry, hate it, <laughs> dread it, don't want anything to do with it, just the whole thought of it is just annoying. And even just unloading my dishwasher for whatever reason, just want, like want no part of that. I put it off and put it off. I'm just basic domestic chores, I guess. I'm not your best housekeeper, maybe. That's the lesson here, but those are definitely some things that I dread. 
So Angela, that's the end of our game, but I wanted to ask you, what is coming up next for you? What can our audience expect? Yeah, so I'm going to be launching a super exciting offer for creative entrepreneurs and writers soon. I haven't given away all the details about that, but if you want to be the first to know about those details, you can always follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my newsletter. Um, other than that, I'm just really hoping to work more with more amazing clients and my current amazing clients at my marketing agency and hopefully just help spread the word about the importance of creative entrepreneurship and creative thinking. What type of businesses are you currently working with? Yeah, so through my marketing agency, we work with a pretty diverse array of businesses, but most of them tend to be either in the healthcare space or in the financial space. That's very interesting. So definitely everybody, if you're looking for some marketing strategy, some help with all that you're doing in order to get the word out about your brand, definitely Angela is someone that you can leverage. She has a lot of great skills and really likes to put a creative spin on things. And also she uses a lot of short form videos. Can you tell us more about how they work and how they're a great tool for businesses? Yeah, I think the, a common misconception about short form videos is that you have to dance in them. You don't have to have any dancing <laughs> skills to create good short form videos. Darn. Um, <laughs> They're almost, I almost see them as being very similar to a tweet, but in video form. So you want it to be about five to 15 seconds and just really deliver a punch of content and value to your audience. And I also think that they don't have to be super formal. So you don't need to have an entire filming studio to do them. You can do them on your phone with some good lighting, not a lot of background noise. And people kind of like that casual, relaxed look when you compare that to more longer form videos, such as YouTube videos. I think that's important. And I think your audience really responds well to you because you are so relatable and you have that ability to laugh at yourself. And I think that's, you know, something we often look at Instagram and other platforms and we're just seeing all this glamor and everybody's lives who seem so perfect. So it's nice to get and connect with people that you can relate to and just kind of fill in the details about yourself. I think I was watching uh, your content the other day and I saw you do a video where you started to record something and then you made a mistake <laughs> and then you just laughed at yourself. And I think, you know, it's really cool to see anyone be able to laugh at themselves because no one's perfect. We all make mistakes, particularly as entrepreneurs and creatives, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I definitely think so. And that's something I've really loved about social media, I think, over the last couple of years is that we've kind of gotten away from that Instagram perfection and like having the perfect aesthetic and more down to content that's full of authenticity and connection. It's, yeah, so interesting because I was talking recently with a group of my students I teach at a few universities and they were talking about they didn't like the notion, I think you and I had talked about this before, the notion of personal branding because they felt like maybe it was fake and not authentic and they wanted to be themselves. But there is absolutely a way to just be yourself out there and still have a personal brand, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and I think I, I don't know, I've never spoken to everyone who has a successful personal brand, but the people <laughs> I know who have successful personal brands are the ones who put the most amount of themselves into it. I think online you can just tell when someone's being authentic or when something is staged and we just right. naturally resonate more with that, with the people who are able to be themselves and express themselves authentically. I, I think so too. And again, it's important to not always be all business. Like we wanna get a peek into your personal life. We wanna see what you like to do, your hobbies, you know, who you like to hang out with. So I think it's important, and I always tell people too, to sprinkle that business side and those things that you want to you know, promote with those more personal elements to make people just wanna to get to know you and get to know your brand more. Otherwise, you know, no one wants to feel like they're you know, being sold to all the time and that there's nothing in it for them. We wanna have that entertainment factor and value in it. So Angela, where can the audience find out more about you? 
Yeah, so I'm definitely most active over on Instagram at Angela Ann Reads. If you like books, it's a really great place to hang out online. I also am around on most of the other social media sites, so TikTok, Pinterest, and um, YouTube, and LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a really great place to connect with me on a more professional basis and to learn more about my marketing agency. And then I also have a newsletter called Dear Reader, where I send out weekly book recs and writing advice. Oh, that's really great. I know people are really looking forward to those book recommendations. Do you have just general recommendations? Are they by genre? How do you work that? Yeah, so every once in a while, I'll ask my Instagram followers what sort of book recs they want, and then I'll create content around that. So it's very user driven, just um, because I think that's probably the most useful way to get book recommendations. A lot of them are YA because I primarily write young adult books, but I've been starting to branch out a little bit more into adult books and I always love nonfiction. So if I'm reading a good nonfiction, I'll usually tell my email list about it. Awesome. I'm sure everybody really loves that. And I'm sure the audience would love to get in on that too. And I want to thank you so much for joining us today, Angela. It was great to hear all about you your company and all the amazing things that you're doing. So keep up the hard work and you know that entrepreneurial spirit. And we will see you next time on launch.